Right, here we go. Another update. A bit of a better read now because, wow, we're, bit, we're getting there slowly but surely. And um, I've re reviewed a lot of my videos, so I thought, oh, I'm not taking this enough, seriously enough, am I? Not putting enough effort into the videos themselves, the editing. So let's let's take let's take this a bit more seriously, shall we? We'll just crack on. Try and make it as dramatic as I can. <laughs> Why not? Um, so I was talking about the light frame, and finally, ding, 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 as you saw it come down, there it is. The idea behind this is simple. Simple. Yeah. We'll see when we program. But the lights themselves are a 200 watt medium range, medium wave. Sorry, medium wave, medium wave range. Um, there's 16 of them. Eight across the back. Eight across the front. Don't worry about the front of the fixes there. I will uh, get some covers on these eventually because yeah, it's a bit, a bit dangerous. But so 3.2 kilowatts of heating. So this will hopefully create one of two things. One of be nice. Reduce the cooling rate of the material as it's extruded, or keep the material at its glass transition like uh, temperature. Um, which would be great because when you put the next layer down, your adhesion is absolute max for your Z. Um, that was the idea of this. So this will move up and down according to where the pellet extruder is going to be, or the tooling, so to speak. Um, I won't be the tooling, it will be the pellet extruder because I don't need the lights on where the, where the spindle is going. <coughs> Excuse me. So all, as you can see, all the uh, reflectors back in. So it's all shielded. Eventually, at the back, see where the lines are? That's where my rails run from. So I've got a 25mm ball screw at the back, 5mm pitch, and a 10 to 1 worm gear. I remember this time. Um, so it's quite painful at the moment. I'm just using, to manoeuvre up and down, I'm just using my standard drill. So it's, um, yeah, it's a bit slow moving. But once the um, JMC survey's on there, that's rated at 4,000 RPM, I won't go that high. Um, so maybe... A, 1500 uh, we'll see what sort of rate we can move but it does like to it's got a little bit of bounce because at the back i've had to reinforce the corners so you might be able to see i'll pop in there in a bit and show you um where the uh, frame is so at the back I've got the rollers and then i've got the linear rails on the back of the frame to support it so support in four positions and then obviously a fifth position on the ball screw on the vertical that's only one single ball screw i might Depending on how, it's, how it holds up, I might have to go two, and then I'll just belt them together so they're synchronous with the uh, single servo. But, okay, we'll see on that one. So, we want to see if these heat lamps work right. I haven't tested it yet. Um, I know they feel warm because I stood in the middle earlier, and it was quite nice and toasty, but I was able to stand in the middle, and I was fairly comfortable, but I wasn't in there very long. But we'll see what it does. So I've got, let's just grab it so quickly. <laughs> it's not a filament spool. I don't get filament that <laughs> bright. It's not, well, it's an old um, spool for a wire, and we've got a thermometer area. So I chuck this in the middle, move the position of the camera so you can get a better view, and then um, fire this up and see if we can either heat it. We should be able to heat it anyway because the heat lamps, um, or at least get it to uh, a good temperature would be nice. Melting it would be great. Setting it alight would be very interesting. I do have a fire extinguisher, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, we'll find out, I suppose. We'll find out. Hopefully it's not um, ABS or ASA, because uh, if it does set alight, it'll be quite fumy in here. And that uh, won't be good for my lungs, would it? So, all right, so I'm going to reposition. And uh, I'll get this in the middle, and fire up. Move the camera as well. Right, so in position. I'll fire the lights up, and then um, first things first before the lights fire up to you. We'll see what the temperature temperature is, shall we? Oh, I've got my gauge. So if you can 
see that we are reading let's see if I can get to zoom it's a bit blurry but you can generally see might be a bit better 13 13.5 13.6 right so we're going to buy that base 13.6 let's fire it up right so we're a few seconds in I'm going to put a timer on should have done that first I know Ah, oh, stopwatch, so that looks terrible. Check it again. We're at fourteen point three point six. And I'll check it. I'll give it a minute, literally. And then we'll check it again. Oh, back again, another check. And get this on there. We'll get you to. Right. It's not impressive, is it? 15. We're going on the right. 16. Sixteen point three. Right. a minute. Oh, that's quite painful doing it this way. We are getting there. 18. Point Depending on where we are. 18.8, 18.7. Right, I'll give it a little bit longer this time. Don't worry, I'll make sure I uh, fast track. Alright, just over an hour. 57.7 is the best we could get. So, we can get that zoomed in a bit better. It's a bit murky, do apologise. And one hour seven, so. Bit of a bust, but. Right, there we go. That was a shame. Oh well. 57 degrees C. Not fantastic. Looked like the bed was sucking up quite a lot of it as well. Um, it's uh, pretty, pretty warm to the touch. <laughs> uh, so I have to mitigate that a bit. I've got some ideas for it, so I ain't got to worry too much. So I might have to ramp up my um, wattage for my lamps. I'm going to double check and make sure I've got these are the right lamps because all that's on the packaging is quartz, infrared, two, uh, 220 volts, 200 watts. I'm going to double check to make sure they've sent me the right ones because it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem right. I'm probably really, really underestimating the power of these lamps, but 57 in an hour, over an hour, hour and seven minutes, that's painful, that was really painful. So, but at least you get the uh, at least you get the overall gist now of what I'm talking about with regards to the light frame that I've been waffling on about, saying this is what's at the back. So now you can see the frame. I hope you appreciate the intro. I'm going to put some effort into my uh, <coughs> excuse me editing, and um, I will continue on. Really, um, keep trialing. That's what the whole point is. Like I said, I, I didn't test this before myself. Um, I fired them up and to make sure they're working and make sure I didn't get electrocuted, which is the main, uh, not main, but very high priority on the list. And, um, but at least I can start working on tooling now. So, and 57C uh, in an hour. I'm not too worried because as you do, as you lay down your material, I'm using HDP to begin with, you know, so it's, it's like the ABS range, sort of fail range to 80 degrees. C, so Celsius. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a major problem at all, at all when it comes to doing the the path. It's going to be running because bear in mind this is right in the middle, probably the furthest point from both lights sets of lights anyway. Um, but as it's laying down the material, that's getting heated by the extruder. So all it's trying to do is maintain the temperature for the next layer. As long as it can maintain the temperature and reduce the cooling rate. Um, I shouldn't have to worry about delamination, about you know, peeling away, I should get good bonding still. Just with this setup, I reckon. Especially once I can get it all sealed up, I reckon that would be even better. I don't think I need to worry. It's just experiment, isn't it? You just have a bit of fun, fire it up, and we'll see what happens. That's it, really. Um, if you appreciate what's going on, uh, keep watching. And anyone else who's, everyone who's subscribed, thank you so much. I do appreciate knowing that there's a lot more nutters out there than just myself. So, um, yeah, very much appreciated. Um, 
on that appreciation, I'm going to be cheeky and I'm going to ask the question or ask a request that if you find this a video of interest, um, please give it a thumbs up. It does help other people find, you know, tells YouTube the usual jargon that this video is of interest. You might like it too. You know, that way I can get, we can get more people in involved and a look um, and see what else we can get going with. Because this is just a tool. Once this is built, oh, we can have some fun. Uh, but yeah, there you go. thank you. Appreciate all the subscribers as well. And appreciate everyone else who's come back to watch my videos. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Till next time. Thank you very much. Right. As you can see, uh, the temperatures weren't that as good as I expected. Um, but I weren't too happy with that, so I contacted my supplier. And unfortunately, I found out they, they sent me the wrong, the wrong wavelength. I specifically asked for a medium wave. Um, for some reason, they sent me a short wave. He said, we don't supply medium wave in that size. I said, well, I wouldn't have requested medium wave, uh, short wave, because it's no good for the material, as you found out. I mean, 50 something degrees, it's just not hot enough. It's not, because especially if I want to go a bit higher, you know, and then they've got the distance in and the size in, and it's just nowhere near enough. Um, so they're going to get back to me at some point. Don't know when, um, hopefully this week. So I'll contact them, was it now the 21st? So I'll contact them on the 18th. Of November and um, I've had nothing back yet but he said they're gonna look into see if they can uh, purchase in or manufacture the one 118 millimeter uh, 200 watt medium wave lamps that I need for this for this project um, either that or worst case scenario it's 600 pound down the drain uh, not gonna be happy we'll see we'll see what um, I've got the, the company I was using Victoria uh, it's not Victoria so a victory lighting God, um, um, he seems quite nice. He seems like he wants to help, but saying you're gonna help and actually helping is not the same thing. I mean, I've had a lamp since January, February, about February time. Um, but I've only just pulled them out. Obviously, I'd, I'd done the bed a couple of months ago, but they literally were fired up for an hour. I'd done the, the lighting, as you saw. Um, they were fired up for, a, a, what, an hour and seven minutes, and the max temperature I could get on the material was like 50 something degrees. If anything, the bed was getting hotter. So, you know, the surrounding area, not the central, but the surrounding area where the lamps are, the bed was getting hotter than the, the material. Um, <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, so back to it again. Eh? But I, I hope you enjoyed the, you know, at least you get the better idea now what I'm on about. But I kept saying that I've got a, I've got the idea of a moving light system. You saw the rail at the back and I kept pulling out the 25 mil um, set up. But now at least you can see you know, finally, obviously I'm gonna, like I said earlier, I'm gonna tidy up this wire and get some covers in um, and order up the ceramic uh, heaters, the ceramic connectors, 32 amp connectors. So, ah, there we go. Ah, can I only uh, cross your fingers, excuse me, a little bit of a cut. Cross your fingers and um, hope for the best. You know, hopefully they'll come, come, you know, get it, get it right for me, that'd be nice. And then that way I haven't wasted all that money. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, I did. Do, I've done a bit of work on the electrical cabinet. I'll pull that around, and I'll give you a little snapshot in that as well. Okay, one second. Right, there we go. So, no more wiring done. I changed. I said earlier in the uh, previous videos about this little setup here. I didn't like how it was, so I've got some main connectors in there. I've got to get the crimps up together to bring them down in and then my servos come off here that's my uh, positive negative out and then each input so not too bad not too shabby now I've got room there for 12 12 outputs 15 amps maybe less than that because I think this is 100, 100 amps I won't go that far anywhere on the servos I've got seven at the moment that's good enough filters wired up my SSRs are wired up my little way goes. These are for my 24 and my 36 volt DC supplies. Uh, spindle, tool boards, as stated. Um, I definitely need to think of more stuff to put onto the spindle just because it seems to be wasted. Uh, Canvas, 
wired in, power is wired in to each of my each of my boards. So that's all wired up. So we are getting there. It's looking better, definitely tidier. So hopefully this will do the job quite nicely. So more wires to go in, obviously, because uh, yeah. So as I said last time, dirt free. Not dirt free D, but dirt free D, dirt free board, six channel, and then Pi four, eight gigs as far as I remember. Expansion board, one XDs, which are to go to my ind individual servos. That's just going to send stepper signal. I mean, it's a bit of a waste already because you can get a lot more, as you can see. There's a lot more on these that you could use, but I've got potential, which is um, nice. Though, when I start adding more stuff to this, because I'm going to, um, later down the line, I'm gonna get a thing running first, and then um, we can go from there and get a few more toys in. So, like I said, manual tool change at the moment, they're just literally for that, but I will um, eventually do an auto. Be quite heavy duty, but it should be fun. There we go. So, uh, nothing much else to really say, to be honest. Progress is a uh, very unfortunate face. So, I have a normal Monday to Friday job. I would love if I could be down here full time, but uh, economics don't allow it at, at the moment. Um, so it is what it is. Never mind. Uh, keep progressing. So as long as I keep progressing, I don't really mind. Progress is progress. It is advancing. It's a lot further along than it used to be. Um, done a bit of work on the. Uh, Police and um, police idlers because the carriage system wasn't moving that nicely. Um, I was getting a lot of tension. A gentleman pointed it out on face, Facebook groups, which is fair enough. I didn't even, didn't even consider it. You know, the radius was, was quite tight, but it, it moved smoothly. Um, it was a little bit firm, but I didn't mind that. But I'm, obviously, I'm going to be putting more strain on the servos, you know, because they're having to fight that. So I've put some, done some idlers. Um, and then put them in out of HDPE and they're up and now it moves quite nicely. So one second, I'll jump over. If I look my little legs up and over. So she moves. Considering the weight of this thing, you know, I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed, I'm a bit praise myself so much, but yeah, oh, jump down again. So it's not too bad. It's getting there. It's getting there. We'll be, we will be printing soon. Oh, wow. If you're liking the progress of this or the, the project itself, please make sure you give it a good old thumbs up. It tells everyone else on the uh, YouTube algorithm that basically this is a good video. You know, don't have to. If you don't think it's a good video, don't even, don't even waste your time. So, which is fair enough. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.